Southern State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. Time to hashtag everything. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple. It's simple, such a sad song. The one that, the one that we rely on. To get us, to get us. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast, brought to you by Care Of, a subscription service that delivers vitamins and supplements customized for your specific health needs. For a limited time only, if you go to TakeCareOf.com and enter the promo code SOCIAL, S-O-C-I-A-L, you can get 25% off of your first order, and we'll be talking about that a bit more at the first break. So again, welcome to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. I am your host, Sarah, and and we have all kinds of trending events and um, videos and stories to share today. The first is this adorable video of a baby chatting with his dad that has been popping up all over my social media. I have seen it so many times posted by various people. And I can understand why, because it is so cute. It is really, really sweet. I looked up a little more information since I just saw the video and found out that it is actually a video of comedian um, DJ Pryor talking with his son, Kingston Gier, who is 18 months old. And um, DJ is watching, dad is watching the season finale, or the, yeah, the season finale of Empire. And his uh, son is sitting next to him, seeming like he's watching along and just babbling away like babies do. And then, you know, dad just starts interacting with him, answering questions that maybe have been asked. And so for instance, they need to work on that, right? Pryor says, yes. Kingston agrees decidedly. Did you understand it though? Pryor asks, no. And you're not getting the full gist of it because not only does he answer, but there's hand gestures and there's facial expressions and there is babbling of an adorable, adorable nature. Um, and then, you know, the, the baby seems like he asks a question. So Pryor replies, uh, oh no, no, not this one. This is the grand finale of this one. And then Kingston babbles something else. And, uh, prior answers. It's really, really adorable because they just seem like they're having a conversation and dad's not speaking baby talk. He's not, you know, he's, he's engaging in a, in a conversation with his son and uh, making it from a parenting standpoint, the son is getting one-on-one -on -one time with dad. He is being listened to. He's being interacted with. Um, at one point dad says, that's exactly what I was thinking. We think a lot alike. And they're just having this adorable conversation that is sweet. But also, I, as I said, I love it because it's adorable and it's sweet, but also because he is just speaking to Kingston in a normal conversation and kind of, you know, teaching him the teaching him the art of communication. One person speaks, another person responds, you interact, you're sharing something, you know, they, they happen to be watching a television show and they're talking about it. You can't, who knows what really the baby is thinking, but dad is engaging and it is so adorable. His, um, Pryor's wife actually posted the, the video to, um, Pryor's Instagram page and it has already had uh, about a million shares and nearly 270,000 comments on Facebook. And I'm sorry, I actually misread that. It's not on Pryor's Instagram page. His wife didn't post it on uh, the Instagram page, but it is. Um, it has been posted and it's gotten a lot of comments and shares. And uh, Pryor says that his kids do make some special and humorous appearances on his Instagram page. The family feel stunned that so many people responded to it, but Pryor said he knew his son was funny. Kingston acts just like him. Um, he is very animated. Pryor, who's 30, told today parents, he takes after me. If you haven't seen this video, it's really adorable. It's not very long. And um, um, 
it's really cute. So as I mentioned, Pryor is um, a comedian. He lives in Tennessee. And when he's at home, apparently Kingston follows him around the house and does everything daddy does. Uh, when he's working on his stand-up bit, Pryor holds a microphone. If he puts the mic down, Kingston picks it up and does his own routine. I'm thinking they should video that because I'd watch that. <laughs> Um, Pryor said he's walking around and imitating the stand-up and he goes, he, he, he at the end. <laughs> it is so funny to him. He keeps doing that until other people laugh. That wouldn't be hard. I don't think that I would have trouble laughing. Um, one, one tweet that I really thought was funny said, this is the best babies. All the other babies are canceled. Oh, no, the other babies don't need to be canceled, but... <laughs> very sweet and it's gotten a lot of positive feedback uh some people are saying you know that's right start the conversation bonding early um another wrote that baby boy is going to be as cute with as much personality as his sweet daddy precious and um prior said he and kingston chat so often that sometimes he forgets kingston is a toddler he doesn't see himself as a baby i don't see him as a baby he said <laughs> so very very sweet um, while pressure, Pryor isn't surprised everyone loves Kingston, he feels a little pressure thanks to his gregarious son. We made a joke, he said. I have been chasing this dream of making it as, as this famous actor and comedian for 16 years, and Kingston's walking around like, damn, Dad, it took you 16 years? It only took me one. <laughs> well, at least he has a sense of humor about his son's sense of humor. At any rate, like I said, if you haven't seen the video, you should definitely check it out because it really is adorable. Let's turn our attention now to some sports and celebrity trending news, and that is the uh, that Game 3 of the NBA Finals was on on Wednesday night, and Beyonce and husband Jay-Z were in attendance is of course the Golden State Warriors versus the Toronto Raptors. The Toronto Raptors were successful 123 to 109 making them two games up to one over the Golden State Warriors. This was the first game to be held in Oakland during the series. So uh, apparently Beyonce and Jay-Z showed up partway through the first quarter and of course made um social media just kind of explode <laughs> it's pretty much what they do right they um they arrived a few as i said a few minutes into the first quarter and it caused a bit of a frenzy they were seated next to golden state warriors owner joe lacobe on the court and um you know be jay-z's dressed in a sweatshirt and um Beyonce is dressed in this amazingly fabulous gold concoction that I'm not even sure I can describe to you, but it's uh, it's very Beyonce, and I can't think that I would wear that to a basketball game, but what do I know? I'm not Beyonce. <laughs> it is it is very impressive. I mean, if you're if you're looking to make an entrance, this outfit will do it. She was also wearing um, gold heels, and she accessorized with a by far leather clutch purse. Uh, neither of them wore jerseys for a specific team, although Beyonce did wear gold, so that could probably provide a hint as to who they were rooting for. They do attend several basketball games per year. I saw several mentions of this being a date night for the couple. Not sure if that is actually true or not, but um, not a bad, not a bad thing to to have a date night for. Get dressed up and go hang out at the NBA Finals. Speaking of Jay Z, he is he's had a pretty interesting week himself as he is officially hip hop's first billionaire according to Forbes and this is from NBC News the Brooklyn rapper and mogul whose real name is Sean Carter has amassed a fortune worth one billion dollars according to Forbes making him one of only a handful of entertainers to become a billionaire and the first hip-hop artist to do so um, his sprawling business empire includes stakes in liquor art real estate and big name companies like uber he has um won 22 grammys which is amazing he's launched his own brands he has um his own clothing label called roca wear 
which was sold to Iconics for more than two hundred million in twenty two thousand and seven. Um, sorry, I should have said he launched his own clothing label. Um, so the uh, the the relatively short list of entertainment industry billionaires also includes Star Wars creator George Lucas. Oscar award-winning director Steven Spielberg, media mogul Oprah and uh, Oprah Winfrey, excuse me, Oprah Winfrey and retired NBA star Michael Jordan and this was according to a list published last year by Forbes. Forbes said it calculated the artist's net worth by evaluating his positions in private companies, adding up his income and subtracting a quote healthy amount to account for a superstar lifestyle. The magazine added that it ran its numbers by outside by outside experts to make sure its estimates were fair and conservative. So, interesting. Um, Yeah, I guess it's not like they just go knock on someone's door and say, hi, can we have your financial records? We'd like to write about you being a billionaire. (laughs) Jay-Z is 49. They officially became a billion-dollar pair in 2017 with a combined net worth of more than $1.16 billion. Um, Beyonce, who is 37, has an individual net worth of more than $350 million, according to Forbes calculations. The hip-hop star who comes closest to Jay-Z is Diddy, with an estimated net worth of $825 million. Uh, in 2014, it was thought that Dr. Dre would snag that first hip-hop artist billionaire spot when his Beats company was sold to Apple for more than $3 billion, but Forbes estimated his net worth at the time would have been almost $800 million, saying capital gains taxes would eat a big chunk. So, well, congrats to uh, Jay-Z for being that, for, you know, hitting that milestone and being the first hip-hop artist to do so. It is now time to take our first break of the podcast. I do want to talk to you, as I said, about Care Of. That is that uh, subscription service which delivers vitamins and supplements customized to your specific health needs. All you do is take a short quiz quiz and answer questions about your diet, lifestyle, fitness, health goals, and Care Of puts together a personalized plan just for you. It's awesome. And now that summer is here, I know a lot of people, you know, January and summer are kind of the times when we think about changing up our our health care and our nutrition and our dietary focuses. So with summer here, a lot of people are making health and wellness a priority again. Why don't you do yourself a favor, take the guesswork out of figuring out your vitamins and supplements and just go take this quiz. They will make recommendations for you. You can add vitamins or protein powders that you are interested in trying to those recommendations. It is really easy. It's very convenient. It's very intuitive. And um, they work hard to make sure that what you're putting into your body comes from the best sources, backed by honest guidance and transparency, all available to you on their website. Um, Also, the... What's really cool now is that their packaging is all compostable. Uh, The individual wrapped vitamin packets are now made from plant-based film, which means that they are compostable. They meet the same safety standards, so your vitamins are kept fresh while they are now better for the environment. So take care of your health. Take care of the healthy environment. As I said, all you have to do is go to takecareof.com, and for a a limited time only, when you enter the promo code SOCIAL, S-O-C-I-A-L, you'll get 25% off of your first order. Again, that is takecareof.com and enter the promo code SOCIAL for 25% off of your first order. We are going to take that first break now. When we come back, we'll be talking about the CMT Awards and some other things that are trending in the news right now. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast, and I will be right back. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture.
Welcome back to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. Before the break, we were talking about, um, among other things, the NBA Finals, Game 3. And the same night that that game aired, the CMT Awards were also on. Uh, Some of the winners include Carrie Underwood, Cry Pretty for Video of the Year. Male Video of the Year was um, Kane Brown, Lose It. Female Video of the Year, Carrie Underwood again, Love Wins. Duo Video of the Year, Dan and Shay, Speechless. Group Video of the Year, are you sensing a theme here? I mean, it is uh, Country Music Video video and Television Awards. Um, (laughs) Group Video of the Year, Zach Brown Band, Someone I Used to Know. Breakthrough Video of the Year, Ashley McBride, Girl Going Nowhere. And let's see, Collaborative Video of the Year, Keith Urban featuring Julia Michaels coming home. CMT performance of the year, Luke Combs and Leon Bridges' Beautiful Crazy. And that is from CMT Crossroads. The awards show was hosted by Little Big Town and included performances from Luke Combs, Marin Morris, uh, Luke Bryan, and an all-star Tanya Tucker rendition of Delta Dawn. So it sounds like it was quite the production, and congratulations to all the winners. Segwaying into something completely unrelated, at least I can't figure out how... I'm sure there's a segue that could be made, but uh, my brain is just not capable of making it right now. Um, Tomorrow is National Donut Day. Yay! I, I've seen people already posting about this on social media. I follow Sandra Boynton, who writes children's books. You may have read them if you have small children who like to read. Uh, she, she's got regular children's books. She's got board books. And she is a wonderful illustrator, and I love her. And she is very active on social media and always posts. I, I frequently know what um, random holiday is coming up because she will post on it. And this post has, I think it was an elephant. She draws all kinds of really cute animal animal illustrations and this one was there's crumbs all over and it was something like donuts no i i haven't seen your donuts what donuts um, so yes tomorrow is national donut day i know that dunkin donuts usually has some kind of promotion going on i think i read it was if you buy any beverage there you will get a free donut probably lots of other places have um specials or um possibly free donuts so you should definitely look into that if you are a donut fan if you are a donut fan what is your favorite donut i am maple bar all the way which is really funny i love chocolate chocolate anything almost except when it comes to donuts and i do not like chocolate donuts i don't like the frosting that is on a chocolate frosted donut nope just don't like it so it's never been my favorite i've always been a maple bar fan i've always been loyal to my maple bar love when it comes to donuts. Um, I like maple bars. I will eat the um, round frosted maple donuts in a pinch, but I would prefer a maple bar. Thank you very much. I recently learned, although my mother says that I had them as a child, about something called cream sticks. They're called a bunch of other things depending on territory, uh, depending on where you live. My mom said they were called something different where we where I grew up in Montana, and I cannot remember what she said, where my husband grew up in Ohio, they're called cream sticks. It is um, a maple bar filled with um, cream. Yeah, so you get, you just get all sorts of flavors going on. You get the maple frosting, you get the, um, you get the donut, you get the fried, you get the fried bread, and you get uh, cream filled inside. What more could you ask? I still think I am um, a basic maple bar kind of girl, though, so... I'm going to stick with that maple bar. But in fact, tomorrow is National Donut Day. So just trying to give you a heads up in case you want to go out and get yourself a donut on your way to work or class or um, hanging out with friends or whatever it is you're going to do tomorrow. I, I don't know your life, but maybe it will involve donuts. I think I need a donut now. I should go look into that. In case donuts aren't your thing, tomorrow is also... um chocolate ice cream day. I'm down with that. Maybe donuts and chocolate ice cream. It's also fish and chips day. Hey, there you go. All of June is candy month as well as pride month. So tomorrow, June 7th, you can eat donuts. You can eat chocolate ice cream. You can eat fish and chips, and then you may just throw up from eating all of that. But tomorrow is also VCR day. And I don't know why it's VCR day, but let's look and see what this says. Um, Obviously, Many of us grew up with VCRs. Many of us grew up with whatever precluded or, or uh, 
geez, whatever was before VCRs. Uh, many of you have never used a VCR, <laughs> but it uh, was first being developed in the 50s, which I did not know, but um, very popular, of course, in the 80s. If you have VHS VHS tapes, maybe you should dig them out tomorrow and, uh, and, and celebrate that way while you're eating your chocolate ice cream, your donuts, and your... Um, fish and chips. You can have a very lazy couch day watching your VCR, watching your VHS tapes, and eating a bunch of food that is really not terribly good for you. Enjoy. (laughs) I think on that note, we're going to go ahead and take our second break of the podcast. When we come back, we will have some news from the world of social media platforms. So stay tuned. You're listening to the Social Media News Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. We were just talking about the fact that tomorrow is National Donut Day and Chocolate Ice Cream Day and Fish and Chip Day and VCR Day. I mean, you you can be busy tomorrow if you really want to. Um, But in terms of social media news that is about actually social media platforms rather than what is being posted upon them and trending, etc., Uh, We will turn now to Snapchat that has recently introduced games. Um, It it announced its new Snap Games platform at its partner summit back in April. And now it has announced the first big game for the platform with a new group shooter along similar lines to Fortnite from Farmville creator Zynga. So before we get into this story a little more, I'm curious, do you... um, do you play games on Snapchat? I have not yet. I've looked at it a little bit, but I haven't really done much with it. I spend more time kind of futzing around with the lenses and those sorts of things. Haven't really gotten into playing games on Snapchat, but I may have to look into it a little bit more. Anyway, this new game is called Tiny Royale, and it pits you and groups of your friends against others in a similar style to other group shooter games, as reported by TechCrunch. Players can choose custom characters and form squads with friends or battle alone for quick two-minute rounds to gather loot and shoot their way to victory. Up to 30 players can battle at a time in teams of up to four. The gameplay is much the same as other Battle Royale games, with maps shrinking in size until only one player or team remains. So it sounds like the game will offer trophies and rewards. There are plans for league play and more in the hopes that it catches on with the growing gaming crowd. Um, There's going to be options for in-game messaging and interaction with a view to boosting on-platform engagement. The addition of games on Snapchat probably makes a lot of sense given the app's younger audience for which gaming has become a key interactive element. Uh, Matching that with the addictive elements of Zynga games, which have seen Zynga achieve significant success on Facebook, could be a great move for Snap as it looks to attract more users and, more importantly, keep the users it does have on platform for longer. If it succeeds, it could become a major element in Snap's growth strategy, making it a more attractive platform for advertisers and driving new ad options through game-related promotions. 
Um, again, the game is called Tiny Real, Tiny Royale, excuse me, and it is available on Snapchat now. So I am curious if anyone has tried it, what you think of it, if it's something that you can foresee yourself playing, if you like this sort of game, you know, with um, battling other teams and joining in and having that be interactive in that way, if it's even something that you think of in relationship to Snapchat. Do you go on Snapchat to play games or do you just use it for the snaps and the lenses and the stories, etc. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. So speaking of gaming and social media, it is becoming bigger all the time. And Facebook is, of course, very interested in being able to tap into that growth potential with gamer related product offering and offerings and tools aligned with the expansion of the new esports shift. So this is an article from June 5th, 2019. And, um, well, hopefully from 2019, but it was from June 5th. <laughs> this article is from June 5th, 1957. Sorry, uh, feeling a little silly today. Uh, anyway, over the last few years, Facebook has rolled out a slew of game-related tools and products, including live stream tipping for gamers and the, the capacity to stream via desktop overlaid on gameplay footage. Facebook also launched its gaming creator platform last year, which takes aim at the dominance of YouTube and Twitch, providing new tools to help gaming broadcasters build their following on social net on the social net network, which again makes me ask, do you play games on Facebook? Uh, I don't think I ever have, so I cannot speak to that, but uh, Facebook, according to this article, has a long way to go to catch up with those two leading game platforms. But given the po the rising popularity and potential ad value of gaming, game streaming, it does make sense for Facebook to use its scale um, to draw in more game-related content. This week, Facebook has released a new set of insights from a recent survey it conducted into emerging cultural shifts in gaming, which, not coincidentally, highlight the rising importance of social elements in gaming engagement. The insights provide some new consideration for those looking to launch promotions in the gaming sector. You can read Facebook's full Understanding the Quest for New Console Gaming Content <laughs> report online, um, or you can check out, uh, you can, I'm sure you can find highlights of that if you don't want to read the entire thing. But um, so some of, some of the stats from this report, 70% 70 70 of 18 to 34 year olds surveyed are open to playing new console game genres when playing with friends or family. 64% of the 18 to 34 year olds surveyed say that playing with friends or meeting new people is what makes gaming great. And 51% of 18 to 34 year old console gaming buyers surveyed agree that Facebook and other social networking sites are great ways to learn about new games. So there's lots of statistics in this report. There's lots of um, different types of uh, elements that are being looked at. For instance, um, where does Facebook fit in? Well, 57% of the 18 to 34 year old console game buyers say the Facebook family of apps helps them discover new console games, while 56% say of those same console game buyers surveyed say that advertisements on their social media feeds, their social feeds help them to discover new games. So um, of the people surveyed, a lot of them actually learn new about new games, et cetera, from Facebook. So it makes sense that Facebook is trying to tap into that to get more interaction from that 18 to 34 year old crowd, draw them into gaming. And once again, I have to ask you, have you, have you played games on Facebook? I guess would be a good question. Have you played games on Snapchat or alternatively, what are your favorite social media platforms to play games on when you want to play them socially? How do you go about that? What are your favorite ways of learning about new games? Um, and do you like that interactive element of the social media platforms where you can meet, quote unquote, meet, because you're not face to face, but meet new people in those ways? Be interested to hear what you have to say about gaming and social media. It's time to wrap up this episode of the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Join me again next week when we'll see what happened over the weekend and see what came out of it in terms of trends and social media news. Thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful weekend.
You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program